It's one thing to have a goal, right? The due respect, have you or anyone you know ever had a goal, an idea, you've been inspired, you feel good about it for a day or two, and then you talk yourself out of it? Mm -hmm. Yes? Or you worry about it, or we, some people start but don't follow through. They just go so far and they don't follow through. So the first step is to know what you want because goals give us direction, goals point us. And if our goals are fuzzy, we have fuzzy results. This is a maybe not so simple example. Suppose you were going, you were invited on a nice summer day to go sailing and you're on Long Island Sound and you travel there or wherever it is and dear friends have invited you onto their 40 foot yacht. And as you're boarding, your, your, your friend says, I have to tell you, to be responsible, last weekend we were out on the Sound, sailing, and we had to be rescued by the Coast Guard. Because the rudder dropped off, it wasn't working. The rudder is the steering mechanism. I think they fixed it. <laughs> Thank you for that. Did you have a second thought whether to join them on the sail? I think they fixed it. If you have no rudder, whether it be a sailboat or a powerboat, and you're out on the sound, let alone the ocean, or in any area, you could, it could be disaster. You have no control, no focus. And then you're subjected to the whims of the wind or the tides. Makes no sense. A human being without a goal makes even less sense. A human being without a goal. So goals get us up in the morning. What we want to begin to explore, and we'll do this on uh, day four, is more purposeful goals. Goals that serve a purpose, that have meaning, where we have a sense of contribution, where we feel like this is something, it's not just a goal, something I want, but it's something I resonate with. It's something that, that, that maybe even that you feel you were born to do, or certainly make a contribution. The challenge with so number one, the ability to stay relaxed, calm, and focused is if we feel overwhelmed because there's so much that has to be done, if we don't have the skill of being able to chunk it down and take a step at a time or get the help that we need, whether it be a coach or a consultant or whatever it might be, or extra education, which is often what it involves, then we become discouraged and we give up and that's why we don't stay focused. Not because we don't care, it's not because we, you know, it's often because we're not confident that we can or we're lacking the practical know-how to make it happen. So we know that relaxation is really, if it's the only thing you get out of this class, you won't be able to put a value on it. It'll be worth everything. It'll support your health, your well-being. We know that there's a, a medicine, they call it homeostasis. When we're relaxed and calm, our body tends to experience homeostasis, which means it's doing what it's supposed to do and the immune system is supporting us and fighting off infection and disease and keeping us healthy and alive And because our body is incredible. It's just that sometimes we get in the way. The third goal would be we want to overcome limiting beliefs. So what's a belief? Some have defined a belief as an attitude we have about ourselves, about life, about what we think we can or cannot do. Agree? Where the heck do these beliefs come from? Are we born with them? Are we born confident? Are we born, you know, not at all. We're kind of born with a clean slate, aren't we? But let's face it, deep within our subconscious, since our earliest beginnings, while we were in our mother's womb, many would suggest, let alone through our childhood and adolescence, we have files upon files of programs running that have been instilled by our parents, by our friends, by our teachers. Some of them support us in our growth and encourage us, and some of these files are just the opposite. Agree? Yep. So it's not about blame, and it's not always the parents, because parents do the best they know how to do, and I'm speaking as a parent, they do the best you know how to do with what you have for that. But the fact remains that some of those files, some of those attitudes, some parents have been quick with, you're never about to anything, or you're an idiot, and at a young age, what we're going to realize is the brain doesn't make distinctions between what's actually real and, and what's just imagination or a statement. It tends to take things literally, so we need to be careful with that. We call it programming. And how? 
conditioning, conditioning, conditioning. So earlier I referred to the cultural hypnosis, the mass hypnosis. Here's a good example that's so true to life. Have you ever been, have you ever gone to the circus and to see the animals, you know, the training, regardless of what your point of view may be about that? But there's a story floating around for some years of a family went to Sarasota, Florida, where Ringling Brothers, Bon and Bailey, Lester Hurd, have their, like a museum, and they have the animals and so on. And as they're going around the grounds and looking, a, a youngster, one of the, let's say, six or seven girl, came running over to her daddy and said, Daddy, Daddy, quick, come take a look. Somebody made a big mistake. He said, what are you talking about? So they went over, and they're looking at the elephants. And there was the mother, the adult elephant, standing very calm and docile, hardly moving. And she had a little, a little like, it looked like a shoelace, very thin rope tied to a little peg. It looked like a doorstop tapped an inch or so into the ground. And there was the baby with a huge chain to a metal stake that's gone into the ground feet, some feet. And the baby is pulling and tugging and pulling and tugging. If you've ever seen this, it's wild. And pulling and tugging. And after about a year, or so, I don't remember the exact time here, but after about a year or so, a period of time, the brain gets the message, it's been trained, can't do it, and you're already tired. So it stops what? Trying. It stops making the effort. When it gets to that point, you could put a little shoelace, and anytime there's anything around it, it knows it's conditioned. And the sad part about that is that in our lives as fellow human beings, a lot of those chains, those shackles, really are in our head. They don't even exist. But we've been conditioned to believe that, and it holds us back. So part of our big challenge together is to overcome some of these limiting beliefs. And again, I, like I said, I appreciate your interest and, and welcome. And let's be straight with each other. You, know, you come in here with everything you need, but you also come in here with a lot of negative, limiting beliefs. We all have it. It's not just you. We all have it. And part of what our mission is together is to identify what's holding us back, and then you're going to have the tools to change it, to shift it. So literally, I can safely say now, based, although we're not doing neuroscience research in our recent years, based on everything going on, we are retraining the brain. So we're going to get in there and delete or change any of those limiting beliefs and imprint, if you will, new, more positive beliefs. So along the way, tonight, for example, I'm going to give you some homework, things to practice, which will help to build your confidence. So you can get a little small success. And as we move through the class, there'll be things we'll do. For example, it is a long day for everybody, you and for me alike. And usually people find that when we leave, God, it flew by. Often people leave feeling better than when they came in, more alert, more focused. And by the time we get to day four, one thing that I love is the transformation I witnessed before my very eyes, physiologically. Unfortunately, I often have people with very serious health problems that have been recommended by physicians, and we don't even know if they can make it through one day, let alone four. And I'm being straight, I'm thinking that too. And they do. And everybody in the room notices it, you know, changing color in the physiology. It's, it's, it inspires me for well, that. When things like that happen, it builds our confidence. When we work with our intuition on day number three, in the morning, I'm going to do a little game that we play. Then in the evening, which will be what? Sunday night, another one. And you'll experience your intuition with a high degree of accuracy that most people never thought they could do, and witnessing others. And then on day number four, it's an exercise we call caseworking. And it'll serve the purpose to introduce you to maybe helping others. It's also an exercise in changing limiting beliefs to make that. So it's not you just listening to me. We've got to get some experiences in there. And number four and last is to use more mind to innovate and create solutions. So we are a mind technology. Although based on what's going on now, I could say we are retraining the brain. But we've often in the past thought of ourselves as a mind technology you know, with respect to that. And the difference being, the distinction is that we've got very specific tools, techniques to employ that you can count on. So these are our four primary goals, kind of a, a um, road back to your success. And as we move through our four days, we'll be building on this back and forth, and I'll come back to it. 
Now, let's look at another point of view. 